Welcome to Strength for the Journey. Strength for the Journey is a radio program designed to strengthen the believer for the days that lie ahead. We have a website called Strength with the number four, the journey.com. That's Strength for the Journey with the number four. And I think you'll enjoy the website if you'll spend a little time going there. There's, um, there's These radio programs are all posted on the website under S4TJ Radio. There's also a link there for articles that I've written and from previous interviews. Um, recently, I posted a new link there. It's, it's called Today's Rhema. Um, and it has to do with the Lord speaking to us today. Something very interesting happened to me about a year ago, and that is the Lord began to wake me up early in the morning and began to speak to me some things that, um, first of all, it, Came, what came to my mind was something that I, I knew I wasn't thinking on my own because I couldn't think the words that were being spoken to me. And I got up and I got a pen and I began to write down what these words were. Well, this last week, um, I got woken up twice during the day or during the morning, um, once on Wednesday and once on Thursday. And the Lord gave me some pretty strong words that... Uh, I wanted to revolve this radio program about tonight. Um, this was the first word that I was given. This was on April 30th. And the word that came to me was, so many aren't prepared for what is to come. They live in a state of denial, not only about themselves, but the world they live in. They live in a world that doesn't exist because they think they are someone who doesn't exist. They believe they have a relationship that doesn't exist. Their dream is about to end. The real world is about to arrive. Every man is about to find out who they really are. Now's the time to awaken from your slumber and find out who you really are. It's time to discover the world you really live in. Denial is deadly, not only for this lifetime, but the life to come. The only way to awaken from this dream is to repent. The only way to find out who you really are is to humble yourself and admit you were wrong. Pride will blind the eyes of what you see on the inside as well as what you see on the outside. Now is the time to change into who I created you to be. Prepare, prepare, for so little time is left to prepare. The bridegroom is coming, so little oil, so little oil. Fill your lamps, repent, humble yourself, obey my voice, turn from your wicked ways. Now is the time to find out who you really are. The harvest about to begin Separate yourselves from the chaff, or you will be the chaff I separate. My grain I will gather, but the chaff will be burned with unquenchable fire. The hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear my voice, and they that hear shall live. Will you be among those who hear? The world will change with or without you. I desire to change the world with you, but I will find another if you won't answer your call. I can change the world with few or with many. Don't miss your opportunity, for it will come and it will go. The plane will depart with or without you. Once the door is shut, it is shut and no man can open it. And that was the word that I was giving, given back um, on Wednesday morning in, early, in the early morning hours. And then on Thursday, I received another word, and that was on May the 1st. And this was the word that was given to me then. It's time to mobilize and take your orders from the commander-in-chief. Have you not learned to take orders from the commander? The rebellious will be court-martialed. The fearful will flee from the enemy and be consumed from behind. The complacent will miss their call of duty and be considered AWOL. War is on its way. Can you not hear the drums beating even now? The natural realm is only a manifestation of the spiritual realm. What is seen is only a manifestation of what can't be seen. Will you take your position? Will you be as King David, although just a lad, and run to your enemy? He knew his God. Do you know yours? Those who hear their God will do, be strong and do exploits. It's time for a preparation. The time for preparation is nearly over. Strengthen what remains. Get into my word like a starving man. 
eat my word as manna from heaven. Know my word that you might identify and know my voice. The dark, the voice, I'm sorry here. My voice is what will guide you. My voice is what will lighten your path and keep you from stumbling in the dark. For nighttime is coming and many aren't prepared for the dark. Know my voice, for it will guide the blind man who knows he can't see. The pride of those who think they can see will find their lamps have no oil. Their flashlights have become dim and even dead. In their pride and false sense of confidence, they won't realize the batteries are dead until the moment they need them. If you will get before me in brokenness and humility and fall at my feet, in my presence I will charge your batteries and fill your lamps. I will restore your soul. Come now, come before me, all you who have wearied themselves from laboring without me. I will restore you, I will revive you, I will give you rest, I will give you peace in the midst of the storm. Fear not, get into the boat now, it's time to cross the lake, the other side awaits you. The storm is coming, but I will be with you in the midst of the storm. These are two words that I got earlier this week, and I know that they are words for right now, words for us to hear, and words for us to heed. If you'd like to go back and reread these words for yourself, it's on a link that's called Today's Ramo, and that's on Strength for the Journey, Strength with the number four, the journey dot com. Um, what I want to talk about tonight is the fact that we have really very little time to prepare. The, the time that much of it has been wasted, time that we could have been used wisely has been used for other things that we shouldn't have used it for. And this is why many people's lamps will be empty when the time comes that they need oil in their lamp. And when they need to see, it will be dark and there'll be no way for them to find their way. God wants us right now to have, um, to have that relationship established, that we know His voice, we, that we know when He speaks to us, that we know when He's getting our attention, when He's calling us. Many people have heard God's voice in the past, but they didn't like what He had to say, so they began to ignore His voice. And now He doesn't speak as loudly or they don't hear Him as well as they used to. And the problem is is really with us. It's, it's the fact that the Bible says that today if you hear His voice, harden not your hearts, as in the day of provocation. That what happens when we ignore God's voice, we have an interesting phenomenon take place that our hearts begin to get hard and as a result, our ears to begin to get deaf. And this is a very dangerous thing for any of us because we're going to get to a place where we are desperate to hear God's voice because we need to hear that voice that's going to guide us and going to direct us in a time of upheaval. And I believe that time is coming soon. And... Many people have lived in such a state of comfort for so long that they actually they went to sleep um, in this comfort zone that they have been living in for too long. And I lived in the United States for 56 years of my life, and, and I know how it is when everything is always the way it's always been, and, and you can always just go to the grocery store and there's everything's on the shelf that you could imagine. But there's going to be coming a day when things aren't going to be as uh, readily available as they've always been, that there's going to be some changes that are going to happen in the near future. I know the Lord's been speaking this to me for a long time, and and now I see the pieces all falling in place right now, that uh, it's happening even right now, that these things that are changing in the world um, are going to make things very uncomfortable for many people. and. They won't really know what to do. Many people are going to panic and realize that they're out of position, just like you can imagine what those virgins did when they realized they had no oil in their lamps. There was nothing they could do. Uh, essentially, the stores were closed. And a number of here just about two years ago, um, even though I had done everything I knew to prepare, because the Lord began to speak this to me 
back in 1999 that things were going to change and and I needed to be prepared and and my problem was I prepared more in the physical than I did in the spiritual and I uh, I was like the Y2K uh, expert and and I literally we took our family to a a more um, safer location that I had in mind was in Montana and we lived there for 11 years and uh, we had just an incredible time there in Montana but then two years ago the Lord woke me up with the words your nest is in the wrong forest and I started realizing that God was trying to get my attention that he was trying to take away my comfort zone because what I had done was I had uh, reestablished my comfort zone and lined my down my nest with down feathers again and and uh, really spiritually had gone back to sleep again and when those Lord's words came to me I realized that I needed to get out of bed I needed to wake up and see what the Lord was saying to me and as I began to hunger for God to speak to me and to reveal what he was trying to say and and explain things to me of what does he mean by those words because he definitely got me startled but one Sunday when we were going to church um, I really needed to hear a word from the Lord and some of the kids wanted to go to a couple different churches where they were involved in the youth groups and there was a new pastor in town that uh, was really a, a man of God and could really hear the Holy Spirit and uh, you know wasn't afraid to say what the Holy Spirit told him to say and and I said, guys, I, I said, we're not going to just another church service today. I don't want to hear just another message. I need to hear a word from the Lord because I've got to make some decisions uh, in the very near future about what I feel the Lord's tell, trying to tell me. And so we went to church that morning uh, at, the, at his church, and my daughter uh, walked behind me and put a little piece of paper, like a notepad, and a uh, pencil in my hand and then just walked by me. And uh, I was trying to figure out what in the world she was doing, but she wouldn't look at me. So I thought, well, Lord, I guess you're, you, you have something you want me to write down. So I uh, sat there, and, and uh, some things happened in the church that, that uh, led the pastor uh, to say the word that the Lord gave him. But the word was you have to be where God tells you to be, and you have to be there when he tells you to be there. And what I saw was... I saw like a uh, two lines of time and place intersecting, almost like a divine appointment. And one was time and one was play, uh, space. And the intersection of those two uh, dimensions uh, coincided into right where God wanted me to be. And when I began to really think about that, I thought, um, you know, there's a, a thing that we call the X on the treasure map. And I started to think about that little X because that's what I saw in my mind was an X. And I heard the Lord say to me that your obedience to me will be the X on your treasure map. That is where your treasure will be in your obedience to me. And so I realized this was a very serious thing that God was saying that I needed to hear what he wanted me to do and I needed to obey whatever it was that he wanted us to do. And I saw another thing, too, is that for about four years, I had been saving uh, money, and I didn't know really why. I was just doing all I could just to, to uh, save whatever extra I could during this time. And, and what I saw was like an airplane leaving a tarmac and leaving the, uh, leaving the ground. And, and what he was trying to say to me was that, that your obedience will be the fuel in your airplane that will let allow you to clear the end of the runway and take off and go where I tell you to go. Well, about that time, um, we had planned a trip. I felt the Lord put on my heart to go uh, to Panama. And so my wife and I went to Panama, and this is where God just began to open my eyes to what his plan was. And this was an amazing set of events that happened even on this trip. But I realized that God was trying to, uh, trying to give me peace in the midst of this turmoil because I was being, my nest was, my down feathers had been stripped out of my nest and he was 
you know, telling me to jump. <laughs> and it's not an easy thing to jump if you've never flown before. And so what I realized was this was a matter of trust that God was saying, I want you to go. And not only just to go where he told us to go and when he told us to go, but the fact that that when that my obedience would actually carry me, that whatever God said to do, that's what I was to do. And if I would do that, that he would carry me to where he wanted us to go. And this was, um, I know God is speaking to many people today, and he's trying to get them out of the comfort zone. He's trying to get them to a place where they just have an abandoned faith that nothing else matters but just doing exactly what God says to do. And I believe part of this is God is preparing us to be his end-time servants and warriors that he can trust, that he's got a great work to do in the end times now, and he's looking for those who will just abandon themselves and just put their total trust in him. And we're going to take a break for just a moment, and we're going to play a song, and then we'll be right back.
trust is what it's all about. God wants us to put every bit of our trust in Him, that there is no trust in anything else but Him, because really He's the only one who can save us. Our money can't save us, our possessions, our uh, friends, only God can save us. And this is where all of our trust has to be. And part of the, as I was talking before the song there, that when the Lord had us leave our comfort zone and leave our little nest, so to speak, um, I thought, well, maybe I'll take a container and uh, take my stuff. And the Lord spoke back to me very clearly. He said, I want you to reduce your life to suitcases. And when he said those words, it was pretty alarming because um, we'd lived in a home for about 11 years and we had eight children and there's a lot of stuff that can be acquired over 11 years. We had actually back in 99, we had reduced ourselves not quite to suitcases, but quite a bit at one point when we moved to Montana. But but now he was asking something even more of me, and that was to really just be stripped to the bone. And this is something God wants all of us to go to, a place where we are just desperate for him, that we're stripped to nothing. And, you know, we've talked about in some of the other previous programs about Luke chapter 14, and this is where Jesus was giving the requirements to be his disciple, that he said that if you love anybody more than me, you cannot be my disciple, including your own life. And if you're not willing to pick up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. And he said, if you don't forsake all, you cannot be my disciple. So I think what the Lord was doing in my life was that he was getting me down to that qualification of whether I really wanted to be his disciple. You know, all of us go to church and we all consider our, ourselves as Christians, but but really are we his disciple? Are we an obedient person that will do whatever he says to do? Have we even learned to hear his voice? Have we come to the point where we have eliminated what we know is not God in our life and what is not the Lord's voice, that the Lord's voice can become more distinct and more clear in our life. And this is one of the first things the Lord took me through many years ago was just beginning to discern, be, uh, just learning how to discern his voice. And because how can we follow somebody that we don't know who it really is? And that was my first question to God. I said, well, God, I said, if I'm going to follow you, I said, how do I know it's really you speaking to me? And then that's when he spoke to me and said, eliminate the devil, eliminate every area in your life you have been deceived. And so I had to go through kind of a house cleaning process of eliminating voices that I knew wasn't God that I began to learn to discern his voice because I never even read the Bible before. So all this was very new to me. And I began to read um, the red letters in the Bible of what his voice sounds like. And when he speaks to us, it's very much like what he spoke to his disciples or what he spoke to anybody during the time he was here on earth. You know, it's not one of these voices that passes back on the back all the time. Sure, he encourages us, but he also kicks our shins and he motivates us to eliminate what's destructive in our life and what is not of him. And if we ignore that voice, if we do not want to do what he wants us to do, then we essentially are uh, disqualifying ourselves from being his disciple. And not only the fact that that many times we are um, just flat out disobedient, another times, many times we're just being, we're just finding excuses. Um, you know, he asked a number of people, uh, you know, follow me. And, and they said, well, Lord, let me first... Uh, uh, bury this person, or uh, let, I have uh, I have this to take care of. And uh, the Lord recently even said to me that your excuses will excuse you. And I realize that God is not looking for excuses. He's not looking for anything but just obedience. Because it's just like uh, training a horse. What good is a horse to anybody to ride if? that horse is rebellious and is not obedient. And the Lord needs workers in his vineyard. And what good is a worker if he's full of rebellion, doesn't show up on time, 
uh, doesn't do a good job, um, he'll find somebody else to use. And this is why this word that I believe that the Lord said to me here um, this last week that I mentioned at the first of the program, that, you know, if we don't take our positions, if we don't do what he's calling us to do, he will find somebody else to take our place. And that's the last thing that we want is that we have somebody else take our place and do our job. You know, it's interesting that Jesus even said when he was uh, going through the streets of uh, Jerusalem and they're all praising him and they're, the Pharisees were saying, would you please quiet these people? And Jesus said, if, if they're quiet, the rocks will even cry out. That, you know, and I've heard, uh, I think there's a song that says, uh, I'm not going to let anybody take my place and, and certainly not a rock to take my place. So we have a job to do. God has called us with a purpose and a plan and a destiny. And he's looking for us, not for excuses. He's not looking for uh, anything but a yes, sir. And even though sometimes what he's asking of us is monumental in our eyes. But I can tell you that from personal, my personal experience is that obedience is always followed with blessing. That God is just looking many times for us to just obey Him. And, and really what our obedience is to God is just it's our demonstration of our trust in Him. And, you know, it's like how can He trust us if we don't even trust Him? How can He trust us and, and give us the kingdom if, if we are not even trustworthy? We're not even worthy of trust. And He said that if you can't even be trusted in unrighteous mammon how can your father heavenly father give you the um the kingdom and give you uh things that are going to last forever how how can he do that if if we can't even be trusted even with the money in our pocket the question is what's going on in your life right now what is god doing what is he speaking to your life and if he's speaking to you um things that you need to be obedient i just encourage you to be obedient to whatever god says to do and you watch and see what God does in your life. Well, thanks again for joining us on Strength for the Journey. Again, our website is strength with a number four, thejourney.com. That's strength for the journey.com with a number four. And we'll see you next week. Yeah.